think about it from the other person's perspective. No one likes to be told that they're wrong. No one likes to be told that they, no one likes to feel dumb, right? So, so treating people like, oh, it's just a matter of, you know, them seeing my side. That, that's not how it, that's not, that's not how it is. <laughs> and so when you have these conversations, first of all, it's not going to be a one and done conversation. It, it's not going to be like, we're going to sit down and have a heart to heart. And then they're going to see everything my way and everything's going to be great. No, um, people don't develop their beliefs overnight and they don't change their minds overnight. So it's unrealistic for you to think that if I just have this conversation with mom or dad, then they're going to see the light and things are going to be totally fine. It's not, it's a process, right? Um, so there's something, and I'd like to share if I can, I'd like to share something called um, direct perception checking. So what this is, and I, I think this is a really handy, um, so this is a really handy sort of process um, and it can start those conversations. So remember the key here is that first and foremost, you want to listen. You want to really understand where the other person is coming from. And a way that you can do that and you can start that conversation is by something called direct perception checking. Okay, so this is a three stage process and I'll walk you through it. So first and foremost, you describe to someone um, what you know about the situation, okay? So um, you're, you're using neutral language, you're not being emotional, you're not blaming, you're not judging, you're simply describing what you know about this other person and where they're at. So this might look like, you know, we've talked about it before and I know that you maybe didn't get the flu shot this year, maybe you didn't get the COVID vaccine, and I know your children didn't actually get their recent NMR shot, okay? Super neutral, just laying out the facts. That's step number one. Step number two is this idea that you present multiple interpretations for your perception, okay? So instead of saying like, it's that's because you hate vaccines, right? No, no, no. You're offering someone multiple op options. So, you know, we've talked about it and I know that you didn't get the COVID vaccine, but maybe it's because you don't really think vaccines are effective. Maybe you read some things that show you that vaccines are harmful. You're offering at least two explanations for the situation, not just one, because then you're implying that you know why this is happening. By offering multiple interpretations, you're showing that you're willing to, um, to admit that maybe you don't have all the information and you're giving people sort of a choice. Is it this or is it this, or is it something maybe different altogether? So the last step is then clarification. Um, you're asking them to help you understand this, this situation and to maybe clarify the way that you've been understanding it. And that can look as easy as, I'd really like to understand your perspective. Can you please explain it to me? So you can see, all of these three steps come in like three sentences. Like this is not a long, difficult thing. It's really important though, that you do these steps in the right order. Because if you come at someone with your multiple interpretations first, then it can seem like you have all the answers and you're blaming and you're judging. So it's really important that you first neutrally describe what you think is happening, number one, neutral terms, no judgment, and judgment, by the way, it can come from your tone too. It does, it's not just in your words, it's the way you say them. I know that you didn't get the shot, right? That's, that's not a neutral tone, right? So really watch your nonverbals, really watch the way that they're coming out of this. Describe the situation, offer multiple interpretations, and then ask them to explain. And that's where you're really opening up that conversation. Here's what it looks like to me. Please help me understand if that's the way that it really is. So this is just one kind of tool that you can use. Again, you're not gonna solve the problem or change someone's mind in one conversation. That's not gonna happen. But by starting this conversation, you can really open people up to not only helping you understand things better, but also to when people vocalize their beliefs and their ideas, it helps them understand it better as well. So not only are they helping you understand themselves, they're getting a new perspective on themselves as well. So this can really be a powerful tool to, again, as you said, sort of, sort of start those conversations and open that up. Does that make sense? Am I throwing too much at you? <laughs> no, that's great. And I think that this is really helpful to give some of these steps that one can take in that conversation to make it a productive conversation. 
without having that judgment um, yeah. or maybe some of those negative connotations that can go along with having difficult conversations. Yeah. There's another tool that you can use. So once you kind of understand where people are coming from, and um, again, like I said, when you when you ask someone to vocalize and to really explain um, why they're doing the things they do and why they believe the things that they believe, it can not only help you understand them better, which again, listening is like the most important piece of this whole thing, but it can also point out to them maybe places where they need to maybe rethink and re-clarify and re-solidify. So let me show you what I mean. There's something called motivational interviewing. Now, this is a an actual process. Um, psychologists often use it. Um, counselors often use it. People in the healthcare field use it a lot. This is the idea that you are um, asking someone to explain and vocalize their beliefs to you because oftentimes there's a gap between what we believe and how we behave. And when you ask someone to vocalize what they believe, that gap might become clear to them and they might have an opportunity to sort of rethink, are my actions really reflecting what I truly believe? Think of it this way. We all know we're supposed to exercise. We all know we are, right? But man, that couch is so tempting. Man, it's easy to just sit there and to not do the exercise. That's that gap that I'm talking about between what we know, what we believe. I believe exercise is healthy for me. Do I do it as much as I should? Absolutely not. So finding, helping people understand that gap can again, not only help you understand where they're coming from, but can help them kind of find, sort of re-examine why they're thinking what they're thinking, okay? So motivational interviewing starts like this. Again, you're starting with no judgment. You're not saying someone is wrong. You're not blaming them. You're not confronting them. You're not telling them that you're right. All you're doing is helping them explain why they're coming from where they're coming from. So let me show you what this looks like. Instead of coming at someone saying something like, you know, you really should get a COVID vaccine. Why, why aren't you getting the vaccine? Right? That's really judgmental. And that's really implying that we all know what we should be doing. Well, maybe they don't know that. Maybe they don't believe that. Right? So instead of telling people what they should do and what they should believe, you're interviewing them in a way that gets them to open up and sort of explain and re-examine where they're coming from. So instead, you could come at it like this. So let's just have a talk. What do you think it's going to take to end the COVID pandemic? Right? Like, what do you think? Just what, what do you think it's going to take? Like, do you think masks are working? Do you think state home orders are working? And you can use this for anything besides the COVID pandemic, of course. Um, get them to explain, like, what do, you, what do you think that plan looks like? And they'll say, well, I think it's a bunch of different things, right? Like, we need multifaceted. It's not just one thing. Like, vaccines aren't going to do it on their own. Cool. Okay, great. But it sounds like you think that vaccines are at least part of the solution, right? So, like, how, how big of a role do you think that? actually play? Like, is it like 10% of the solution? 40%? So just kind of ask them to start this conversation. And then when they're finished um, explaining, then you can say something like, well, that's great. So like, you admit that vaccines maybe do help some people, right? So like, who do you think would be a good candidate to get a vaccine? Um, maybe people who are at risk, maybe people compromised people, maybe older people. Like, who do you think the vaccine would work for? Okay. And then once they explain, then kind of saying, okay, so it sounds like, in your opinion, there's certain people who probably should get the vaccine. Why do you think that they should? And like, why do you think other people should? So again, you're not telling them what to do. You're not throwing information at them. You're having them explain their point of view. And you're listening and you're, you're repeating back what you're hearing them saying and kind of helping them walk down that path. So it sounds like you believe X. That's great. So then... Um, take me through how you think that relates to why. Okay, cool. Then what do you think it's going to take to get us to Z, right? So again, you're not convincing anyone of anything. You're helping people understand what's behind their motivation and helping them kind of vocalize and realize, well, wait a second. Well, maybe I do need more information on this topic. Maybe I don't know what I'm, uh, maybe I don't exactly know what's going on. I just know that I believe it and I don't know why, right? So to your point, this one conversation, again, is not going to change someone's whole attitude. It's not going to get them to run out and get a COVID vaccine right away. But it, what it will do is it'll plant that seed of like, wait a second, you know, I wasn't really able to explain why I think this. Maybe I need to go and do some more homework on this. And once you get people started thinking about that, 
then they're taking that journey on their own. And it's not you telling them something. It's them taking control of their own opinions and their own behavior. And that we all know is the key to, to behavioral change. It has to be their idea. It can't be your idea. Again, if you've ever raised children <laughs> or hung out with kids, <laughs> right? Like just telling someone what to do or think is not going to work. Um, you have to make sure that it's their idea and it's their motivated to do it. 